Let's roll. We are kicking it live at the beautiful MGM Grand, straight for the strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. Countdown to kickoff continues. Countdown to a lot of things continue. There's a lot of stuff going on on the strip, as there always is. And, of course, MGM Grand is right in the middle of it all, and so are we. Edmonton Oilers fan have taken the building over. They're ready to take the arena over. The Edmonton Oilers have won 16 consecutive NHL hockey games. They're playing the defending Stanley Cup champion Vegas Golden Knights tonight across the street. We'll give you our thoughts on this game. We'll give you our picks on this game. Let's get caught up uh, with the Super Bowl. Last night was quite the circus media night at Allegiant Stadium. They've turned the Super Bowl media night into basically WrestleMania. They have the players coming out together. San Francisco 49er fan stepped up and repped hard uh, last night. But the Kansas City Chiefs relish being the villain. And don't think the Kansas City Chiefs won't relish being the underdog in the championship game as well. It's interesting. The Kansas City Chiefs are only the third defending champion to be an underdog in the football game. And we've, you know, we've talked a lot about the point spread this week. Why is it that the San Francisco 49ers are actually favorites? I'd say that basically, what, 90% of the people that we've spoken to uh, this week have said they like the Kansas City Chiefs to win this game. Uh, we're going to have an NFL great step up and enjoy us. Lights out, Sean Merriman in the house. Uh, San Diego Charger legend Sean Merriman kicks it with us. Speaking of legends, we got a legend in the making uh, going to join us on the program, Sheena Baffery. Now, if you're into this power slap uh, stuff, you know who Sheena Bathory is. Sheena Bathory has over 200 million hits and views on Instagram. Her knockout of uh, in her last fight, literally like hundreds and hundreds of millions of hits. She is fighting on Friday night at the Durango here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's power slap six. We're going to break it down. Uh, with Sheena Bathory as well as the CEO and the president of Power Slack, uh, Power Slap, Frank Lemicella will join us as well. We've got a stack program. Jack Settlement will join us live right here from MGM Grand. And Jack was in the house for the circus uh, last night, and he asked a great question. All right, just you know, forget about this. And are you a wrestling fan? And what are your childhood memories of the Super Bowl? What color Gatorade do you guys drink? Point blank. And I love Jack. We're, we're stoked we're going to have him on the program because you remember in the past couple of years, every time I have a Super Bowl player on, I always just sort of ask him, hey, man, what's your favorite color of Gatorade with the team anyways, man? What color do you guys kind of drink? And you'll always still tell you point blank, we hate, we hate the yellow. We hate the lemon stuff. All right? We hate the lemon stuff. It turns out that the San Francisco 49ers actually like blue. All right, they like blue Gatorade, just for the record. Yet they don't drink water, right? But they actually pour Gatorade, even though they're not really drinking Gatorade during the game, they're drinking water, they pour Gatorade on the coach because Gatorade is the damn sponsor, right? They're paying money uh, for this stuff. But it's good to know, so we're going to get our boy Jack Settlement up here in a couple of minutes. We've got big news from Las Vegas as well. We're literally across the street from where the Oakland Athletics potentially would move. Uh, but uh, legendary mayor... Oscar uh, Goodman, of course, his wife, Carolyn Goodman, uh, now the mayor of Las Vegas. I'm sure the A's didn't expect this Super Bowl week as she does the media rounds, saying that they would be better off staying in Oakland. <laughs> and she really doesn't think that it's worth the trouble at this point. Wow. So we got a bombshell there. we got Brady Cannon in the house. It's the waste management, always the most popular golf tournament of the year because people get wasted literally and figuratively at this uh, tournament. Speaking of getting wasted, was Kyle Shanahan drunk last night? Like, we've got some video, and a boy Jack Settlement was there. I want to ask him because he spoke to him. There's some videos out there. Normally, if there was a drunk Super Bowl issue, I would be in the middle of it. Like, I'm so happy I'm not. I like I was like, is somebody drunk? It's like, no, it's not. Is Morency drunk at the Super Bowl? No, no. It's actually Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> it's not Morency. And I spoke to someone today that's in the NFL, pretty big dude. And I said to him, I said, hey, yo, man, was Kyle Shanahan drunk last night? He goes, I think he, I think he was. <laughs> and then he goes, you know what? He goes, he's getting out of his system early in the week, and then we get to work. Speaking of getting drunk, I know we got Edmonton Oilers fans all over the place here. These people have been getting drunk all weekend. I think the Edmonton Oilers are actually in the Super Bowl. 
and it's not the Niners and the Chiefs because the Oilers fan have taken the strip over. We're going to give you our pick for this hockey game. The Edmonton Oilers are actually favorites in this game, despite the Vegas Golden Knights being the defending Stanley Cup champions. I don't know, man. If I had a 16-game win streak, I don't think I want the All-Star break to come. You know, terrible timing for the Edmonton Oilers to be in the middle of a 16-game win streak and now have to come out of the break. And, oh, yeah, Las Vegas aren't giving us any of this stuff about, oh, it's just another game. No, no, they came out and said, yeah, we want to win, we want to end the streak, and we want to stay ahead of them. It's super competitive right now. you got the Vancouver Canucks. you got the Edmonton Oilers, the Winnipeg Jets, uh, the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, it's, it's just crazy competitive, crazy stupid right now um, in, the, in the Western Conference International Hockey League. I want to get into some props. We're going to get you more props. I can't wait to see what Jack Settlement's come up with as far as props. And our boy Jack's been known to break, like, NBA news in the past, too. Are the Knicks going to do something else? Um, we're going to find out Jack's going to the power slap. And this is super cool that we've got Sheena Bathory on the program. Like, uh, this girl's going to be a phenom, man. And for people that think that, like, power slap is, is savage and it's not for you and stuff, fine. But I remember people saying the same thing about the UFC 20 years ago. And here we are right now. The UFC built this town, essentially, uh, in the last 20 years. So I, I wouldn't count Powder Slap out. In North America, it's funny because you get more concussions from playing football than we go from Power Slap. Right? But it looks worse. Right? They're not wearing helmets. And you're seeing people get smoked across the side of the head and it freaks people out. But we've got one of the best ever to do it. And basically, like the Ronda Rousey, a power slap, Sheena Bathory will step up. And then we're going to get Sean Merriman's Super Bowl pick uh, as well. We'll see if he's one of many. Basically, everybody that says the same thing. I can't get in front of Mahomes. You know what? I can get in front of Mahomes. Don't get in front of Mahomes' father because he's drunk and he's going to run you over. But I'll get in front of Mahomes. I don't have a problem with it. Listen, he hasn't won every Super Bowl he's been in. Right? And, in fact, we went over the numbers yesterday how the numbers start to dip, actually, for Mahomes a little bit in Super Bowl. San Francisco's got to come up with a way to shut down Pacheco and really just force Mahomes to be able to throw the football to the limited cast of weapons that he actually has. But we're getting fired up for this football game. we got all kinds of stats. we got all kinds of data. And uh, can people stop, like, coming at our boy Brock Purdy? Uh, we, we're going to show you. We're going to show you a comparison of Brock Purdy and a world famous person uh, in a couple of minutes as well. Poor Brock Purdy. The, when I saw it, I said, "Man, why? Why you got to play this guy like that?" <laughs> I said, why, "Why? Why? 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 Why you got to play this guy uh, like that?" So we've got a packed uh, house here. Jack Settlement steps up in it. Brady Cannon. He's the best in the business when it comes to handicapping golf. We're going to break it down, waste management style. We'll get a head start with Brady as far as what he's looking at uh, for the Super Bowl. We got Sean Merriman. We got Sheena Bathory. We got Jack Settlement. We're locked and loaded, kicking it live right here at the MGM Grand, straight from the strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. Super Bowl week coverage on the grid continues. Bring it. Super Bowl is set in Vegas. We get a rematch from just a few years ago. The only consistency in the playoffs has been Travis Kelsey. Brock Purdy, you know, back-to-back -back weeks, only one touchdown pass, right? You can't win MVP with one touchdown yeah. pass. I hate the Chiefs, but I bet on him. This is going to be a game that is played inside a field goal now from a spread perspective. All that matters is there's one game left, the big game. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. If he doesn't run well, the Chiefs are really in trouble. Mm -hmm. If McCaffrey doesn't run well, there's a lot more options that you can actually use at that point. And that's how I'm trying to approach it and effectively. But also, Pacheco, anytime touchdown, if they're going to score a touchdown, probably going to be him. That's a good look. Attempts for Pacheco. If you believe Kansas City is going to play their style. Yeah. If you don't, then maybe you go under that total in regards to that. Pro football today. Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. 
But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. I think Mahomes will go over that 12 and a half. Easy. I think uh, McCaffrey will have 20 or more attempts because they know they can't throw all day against that Kansas City defense. They got to run. Teams that win have been healthier for the most part. So you have two relatively healthy teams, but the 49ers have the advantage. Pharrell coast to coast. Only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game starts so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Sports Grid Super Bowl 58 coverage continues. Straight from the Strip of Las Vegas, Nevada. I am Gable Morenzi. We're kicking it live at the beautiful MGM Grand. As countdown to kickoff continues. There's a wild, it's a wild week uh, this week. Um, I met Tiafino Lopez earlier in the day. Just like walking in the hallway at Mandalay Bay. He's fighting on Thursday night. We've got Power Slap on Friday night at the Durango. It's the first time ever that it's been open to the public. It used to be invite only. Our boy... This show, it's like this show, Invite Only. Our boy Jack Settleman's here. He's been getting the invites. He's everywhere. Um, and in fact, Jack, I follow you on, on social media. You're a big social media star. And you've been in more stadiums this year than Al Michaels and Pat McAfee combined, bro. Like, you know, like every week you're, you're somewhere else. And this week you're at the Silver Bowl in Vegas, baby. How you doing, my man? I'm doing great. This week is insane. I literally got sat for breakfast this morning. Roger Goodell getting seated right behind me. So you can see a ton of people. Out right, hold on, hold on, hold on. He got sat for breakfast. Me, me and Jack are staying at the same <laughs> caliber and quality of hotels, evidently. He's got Roger Goodell sitting next to him. I've got like a hooker. Yeah, I man, I, I got, I got a hooker. You like, you know? was sitting. With <laughs> so you were at the, you were at the, um, the press conference last night, and in the past, the open media night, it's always been known as a circus. But it used to just sort of the media would make it about themselves a lot. You'd have the hot, you know, the hot girl from Brazil, and you know what I'm saying, and the players would all be in. They've really sort of modernized this and sort of felt like I wasn't there last night. We were doing the show here, but watching the clips after sort of seemed like they were hyping up WrestleMania or something. They're on the stage together. What was it like being in there? It was cool. It was electric. Like you said, more Niners fans than Chiefs fans. I don't know. It's closer, obviously. I don't know if there's a little fatigue. The Chiefs are in this thing every year. Actually yeah. talking to the Chiefs players, they seem bored. They, they've gotten these questions year in and year out. They've been in this thing for the past six dances. So it was still a fun time. A lot of access to the players. Also, the Niners have so many stars. Ayuk, Debo, Purdy, Kittle, Fred Warner, Trent Williams. So you got free access to go. They weren't that busy. Chief yeah, from what I understand, too, because everybody swore Kelsey and everybody swore Mahomes, right? Exactly, and Andy Reid, too. So it was a great night. At, uh, well, you asked some great questions. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, you know, we'll get to, to some of these clips. But let me ask you, because you were there, the San Francisco 49ers seem extremely loose. You know, Kittle's talking about wrestling. Uh, Brock Purdy's doing sponge, uh, you know, bumps, you know, SpongeBob um, uh, imitations. 
Kyle Shanahan seemed very, so relaxed. Some people thought he had a couple of drinks uh, before he went on the field uh, last night. What was your takeaway? Let's just cut to the chase. As betters, as we're in a sports book here, what, what were your taking away? Because sometimes I'll interview athletes, and especially I interview a lot of fighters and stuff, and I'll know. I'm like, oh, they're so done. Yeah. I won't tell people publicly because, you know, I just had them all my, you know, yeah. you know the drill, right? Oh, I'm like, no, no, they're going to win for real. Did you walk away liking or disliking anything about speaking to the people from a betting perspective? I mean, as a Ravens fan, you could tell the experience differences in the AFC Championship. The Chiefs are just calm, cool, and collected. And I think this Niners team in 19, they were kind of this new team fresh to it all. And they do have a little bit of confidence and reserve. Shanahan, his third Super Bowl. Debo, he's a young player in the league, but he's now been in two Super Bowls. Kittle, he's been planning on being back in the spot. The big question mark is the quarterback, which is a huge question mark. But everyone else, like you said, seems to be relaxed, seems to be embracing the moment and confident going into this game. I think Brock Purdy feels more confident than other people feel in him. Yeah. And I think I actually think that the Niner players – that the fact that he was challenged. I had my questions about him. I've always liked him. But it's like being a jockey if you're on the fastest horse. Right? And we've seen a couple of times this year. You know, and I'm not going to judge him, but, you know, the Cleveland games, the Cincinnati, just yeah. certain times. All right, we need you to march us down the field now, bro. Like, we're not, we're not winning 20. McCaffrey doesn't have four touchdowns yeah. tonight. We need you to do it. I think he's shown that he can. The big drive under big pressure against the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. And that was a pretty epic second half that he had. Everybody focused in on Detroit's management, but the Niners played great. They put 27 points up on the board in the second half. They played an amazing game. And I asked Brock Purdy last night, I said, what, what could happen in the draft process that someone who could be starting a Super Bowl in year two, who was in the MVP conversation, how could they even fall out of you know, the first six rounds? It blows my mind. He's done everything. If you listen to Niners fans, they'll jam it down your throat. He's been special this year. It's not the Niners team. But then when you think about betting the game, the Niners team is special. They're loaded with all pros, both sides of the ball. They got four or five all pros. So I'm, I'm in on Brock Purdy. I'm going to be in on the Niners. Look, if you want to bet Patrick Mahomes, do it. But like you said in the opener, you don't want to get in front of Patrick Mahomes, especially as a dog. I did in the Super Bowl when Brady was there. Now, is Brock Purdy Tom Brady? I don't know. But I, you can do it when the better team is the better team. I find it interesting, and I brought it up off the top of the program, that this is only the third time that the defending Super Bowl champion has been an underdog. Both times, they lost. The 1978 Dallas Cowboys were going back a ways. The 1978 Cowboys and the 2014 Seattle Seahawks, who lost on the goal line to the New England Patriots. So it goes to show the two, because a lot of people have asked me and I've asked guests, we have had a lot of handicappers on, if it's so one-sided, oh, Mahomes is 11-1 and one against the spread as an underdog. He's 14-3 and three in playoff games. I brought it up. He's 18-3 and freaking three against the spread in any game that the point spread is three, game, three points or less. So basically pick them games he's 18-3 and three in. There's all this sort of data and sort of, you know, Mahomes mystique. Yet San Francisco have been the favorite all along, bro. There was that little buyback with KC, but you saw the market. It's been all SF since. It has been all public money on the Chiefs, and these bookmakers who are probably behind us somewhere, they don't care. They're like, all right, let's take the Kansas City money because the, the line should be four, five, six points. If it wasn't Patrick Mahomes, it would be that way. And I get it. Pat Mahomes deserves that respect. But I think the Niners are the right side in the game. All right. So you had an opportunity last night to speak to Shanahan. You asked him about the, uh, the Gatorade. Yeah. We've got the numbers here for, for Gatorade. What was your takeaway from this? Great question. Yeah. So a little backstory. At that Super Bowl, I mentioned Brady Mahomes. I filmed the Gatorade being dumped. And famous moment, they're dumping the Gatorade before it gets dumped out. It cuts to Mahomes on the bench. No one knows what color Gatorade. So I'm getting texts. I have the video. I tweeted out millions of views. I'm the official view. I'm the official video for the color blue being the official Gatorade. <laughs> so Gatorade's been my thing every Super Bowl week. So we went into that trying to ask some questions. Shanahan said his favorite color is orange. 
He's not playing in the game. It doesn't matter. He's not drinking it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the line still moved off of that, you know, fun content. So we talked to Ayuk. We talked to some other players. I've got some sources. I've got some pictures. The Niners tend to be a blue Gatorade team. Take that for whatever it's worth. You know what? Blue is the cheapest number. Blue right now, guys, blue plus 200. Purple plus 225. Orange plus 400. Yellow, green plus 600. Red, pink plus 700. Clear water, 12 to 1. No Gatorade poured, 16 to 1. So let me touch on some of the long shots real quick. Clear. I think Shanahan. That's got to be worth a shot at 12 to 1. It's worth a shot because all the teams. And somebody just picks up the closest damn yeah, one and said, yo, we're getting them, right? To your point, Gatorade pays a lot of money to be on that sideline. So I do think <laughs> that's the Gatorade when it's signed. Red, obviously the two teams in it. I don't think that narrative makes a ton of sense. No Gatorade pour. The last few Super Bowls, we've been very close to a no Gatorade pour. If you think about last season, last year's game, it ends on the failed Hail Mary. And both teams run out onto the field. That's what you're looking for is a game. A chaotic spread. end of the game. You can't get the game. Oh, great right point. The, yeah. Two points spread in the game. Think it could come down to the wire. Everyone says script, Taylor Swift, all this stuff. So I like uh, 1,600, no Gatorade for All right. We threw out. Uh, we've got 30 seconds here. We've got one more segment with, uh, with Jack. We have Sheena Bathory uh, going to join us. You're not going to want to miss this. She's a phenom. And um, I'm telling you, there's something special about this. This is where she got like 200 million hits uh, online. We got Sean Merriman going to kick us. We'll get us some more props. I got, we got all kinds of, you know, Rage of It's old school. <laughs> Bostonians. Do they, do, do they know the Patriots aren't playing anymore? You're not in the Super Bowl anymore. <laughs> the Super Bowl is set in Vegas. We get a rematch from just a few years ago. The only consistency in the playoffs has been Travis Kelsey. Brock Purdy, you know, back to back weeks point one touchdown pass, right? You can't win MVP with one touchdown yeah. pass. I hate the Chiefs. But I bet on him. This is going to be a game that is played inside a field goal now from a spread perspective. All that matters is there's one game left, the big game. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. He doesn't run well. The Chiefs are really in trouble. Mm -hmm. If McCaffrey doesn't run well, there's a lot more options that you can actually use at that point. And that's how I'm trying to approach it and effectively. But also, Pacheco, anytime touchdown, if they're going to score a touchdown, probably going to be him. That's a good look. Attempts for Pacheco. If you believe Kansas City is going to play their style. Yeah. If you don't, then maybe you go under that total in regards to that. Pro football today. Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Mahomes will go over that 12 and a half easy. I think uh, McCaffrey will have 20 or more attempts because they know they can't throw all day against that Kansas City defense. They got to run. Teams that win have been healthier for the most part. So you have two relatively healthy teams, but the 49ers have the advantage. Pharrell coast to coast only on sports grid. One that's been to a sporting event the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. 
I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. are kicking it live. Welcome back to Sports Grid coverage of Super Bowl 58. We're here live from the beautiful MGM Grand uh, Casino and Resort. Countdown to kickoff is on. We've got a packed show. Brady Cannon is going to join us on set in a couple of minutes. We've got NFL great Sean Merriman going to join us a little bit uh, later on. And we've got a new great and power slap feed on uh, Sheena Bathory uh, will join us as well as the CEO and president of Power Slap. Uh, Frank Lemisella will join us as well. Uh, we're kicking it with Jack Settleman right now. And I was talking earlier about uh, no one wants to get in front of Mahomes and you've got this sort of LeBron magic going on around him. And, you know, people talk, oh, he's this and he's that. You brought it up earlier, Jack. He did lose the Super Bowl uh, before. It's not like he's undefeated in these instances. But speaking of being favorites, the 49ers are the only team in the National Football League that have been favored in every game. Uh, this year, the last team to be favored in every game in a National Football League season, the 1994 San Francisco 49ers, baby, that won the Super Bowl. I almost want to go Lee Corso here and <laughs> you know, we're gonna put, we're gonna, we're gonna put, put it on you, but it's a little early in the week. We don't have to do that quite yet, but there's there's a trend if you know for you want to hang your hat on something. So what do you think about this? You're liking San Francisco in this game. I am liking San Francisco and. If a team is favored in every game, what's that normally mean for that team? That team's probably pretty good if the bookmakers are making them on paper. You know, you still got to win the games and cover the spread. But I do like the Niners in this game. Like I said earlier, all pros on both sides of the ball. If you want to ask questions about Brock Purdy, you're afraid of jumping in front of the Mahomes train, I don't blame you. Like, I understand why you get that feeling. But in his three Super Bowls, trailed by 10 points in the fourth quarter against the San Francisco 49ers, did not look good against Tampa Bay. I know his O-line was beat up, but that's how I expect this game to go on Sunday. The better football team is the Niners, and when they played the Bucks in that Super Bowl, he was overwhelmed because they were the worst team. Can he overcome it again? Of course he's That Chief Mahomes. team was decimated they on were. the O-line. We they have were. To, we Joe have to Tooney, that. is yeah. he playing on Sunday, no, right? No, so, they said probably not. You're and right. this is one of the best pass rushes and in the NFL. And a great defensive lineman as well that people are talking yeah. about. Yeah, a lot. that yeah. clogs up against a run team. The Ravens blew it. They panicked. They choked it. They ran the ball six times. So you're a Ravens fan, yeah. hardcore. I'm a Buffalo Bill fan, hardcore. I swear... I thought between the both of us, one of us would be able to yeah. knock them off. The Bills I, were decimated. I, I yeah, really they think really the Bills were. They had, they had seven yeah. backups on the field right. in the second half. But the still, Ravens were at full strength. And yeah, if the Ravens had still. adopted the Bills game plan, I think they win the game. But they panicked. And the Niners, like you mentioned earlier, they've been through this twice already in this postseason. So the questions around Brock Purdy coming from behind have been answered. Now, do they want to fall behind and lose the run and, and lean on the pass? No, that's not the game plan against Patrick Mahomes. But I still think if they play a balanced game, Andy Reid is as big of a big game blunder as Kyle Shanahan. So if you're scared of the coaching thing, they both are awful at time management. They both have blown situations before. I think it's a pretty even game, and I like the Niners as the better team in this one. I, you know, we're not going to sit here and try to tell you that Mahomes isn't awesome and he isn't all that, but the number that we've talked about, he's actually thrown more interceptions in his three Super Bowls than he has in his other 14 playoff games combined. That's great. All right? Um, the numbers as well, if we get into it, Mahomes' completion percentage dropped from 69% in his first three rounds in the playoffs to 62% in the Super Bowl, which is the largest decrease among 13 quarterbacks, which at least three Super Bowl starts. There you go. So we're backing it up a little bit here, Jack, yeah. right? He does now have this unbelievable defense that he has never had in his That's career. That's carried this team. 100%. But he hasn't turned the ball over. So what's it look like they fall behind? And that defense has to be more run commit. Now that pass defense starts to become a little weaker. So I, I just like the Niners in this spot. But I'm not in love with it. I don't no, want to yeah, say yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, biggest yeah. lock of all time. You're still so what, what are you, quote, in love with, so to speak? What do I love? Because every lock one? has a key. We should remind people that, right? Every yeah. lock has a key. Yeah. But is there a player prop or so? What about the total? 
I've got a bet that I like that both teams are going to score 20 points. 20 points. Both teams yeah. score 20 points or more. I like that. I do like that. Like, I don't I'd think be it's surprised a bad if it was 2017. Yeah. Like 23-20 wouldn't shock me. 2017 would surprise me. Yeah. The Chiefs defense has been, really should be the story of this Super Bowl. I mean, they have held every opponent besides one to 27 or less points. Uh, only two teams have scored 25 plus. So that's where I kind of get nervous, especially if you want to take the over. I think you probably do want to correlate a bit of a degree. If you like the over, you're probably on the Chiefs. And if you like the under, you're on the Niners, which is counterintuitive because you're betting against Patrick Mahomes from scoring points and coming from behind. But that's how it's been all year. They have not been good offensively. And I think one game against, by the way, against Miami, they were not good offensively, efficiency-wise. Against Buffalo, they were extremely efficient. That was their best. They didn't score in the second half of the AFC Championship. And no, no one wants to talk about that. And Baltimore racked up over 200 yards of offense in the second half exactly. of that game. So I, I do lean under in this game. It's what, 50 points? 47 and a half. 47 and a half. I think that's a key number that you can get the under on, so I like that as well. Could you see a situation where uh, San Fran wins the game and doesn't cover, a 24-23 type? I think that would make me nervous to lay. No, it half. wouldn't be shocking in that sense, in that Super Bowls always used to be blowouts, right? And point spreads would never matter in Super Bowls. Yeah. Look at last year in the Super Bowl, three-point game, 38-35. Look at two years ago in the Super Bowl, 23-20. We've had extremely close games, and in yeah. fact, we had Teddy Covers on set yesterday with us, the legend, Ted Savransky. And I asked him his score, and he told me 23-22. And I sort of chuckled a bit. I said, that's a weird score. And I asked him again. I said, so what's your final score? He goes, I told you, 23-22. I said, so that's your score? He goes, yes. He goes, yeah, I don't know how many times I have to tell you. He goes, Kansas City is going to win 23-22. He thinks it's going to be a one-point game. Hey, those are, I've seen the exact scores props, and I've also seen everyone with their Super Bowl square. So I'm yeah, sure we couldn't someone find. three two would have some. No, fun his score it. was so whack. His score was crazier than like a nut job on the strip. But uh, you couldn't, you can't, you can't bet twenty three twenty two. We're not in England, all right? In England, <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> they they take a lot of bets here. I told them, listen, you can do twenty three twenty. You want to do twenty four twenty one? But you're right. Listen. 27-24 to me feels like a viable score to this game. Either way, all right? The San Francisco 49ers are 80 to 1 to win this game 27-24. The Kansas City Chiefs are 90 to 1 to win 27-24. Last time I checked, if I went to the racetrack, the horse track, and I bet on one horse at 80 to 1 and I bet on another horse at 90 to 1 and only one of them won, I still had a pretty damn good day at the track. So <laughs> I don't have a problem with throwing, throwing out somebody's scores. Yeah. Let me give you something that everyone should leave this conversation with. Last year, you said the score was 38 to 35. Yeah. Every, you know, the explosion of sports betting in America has been insane. It went from one state five years ago to we're in 38 states. Super Bowl's in Las Vegas. 38-35, Jalen Hurts scores two touchdowns, and he scores first for that team. Travis Kelsey scores the first touchdown for the Chiefs. Every prop that your mom took. The because, public. Yeah, that the public took hit. So is this going to happen again? Let me ask you, gut feeling. Uh, Who my, scores the first touchdown of the game? Well, my gut feeling that I want everyone to leave with is Travis Kelsey, Rasheed Rice, Isaiah Pacheco, Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, Brock Purdy. All their props are not hitting this year. Don't be afraid of the unders just because last year it was so fun to stack them all up and, and everyone and my grandmother even hit a same game parlay. First touchdown this year, I think – I like George Kittle to get red my mind first. I, I like the Niners to go down the field. I think that once they get in the red zone, you got to think you're going to try and stop Christian McCaffrey, especially with that big nose tackle out. So go to George Kittle. He's been ready for this moment for five years. I, I like Kittle. Listen, you can't go wrong playing tight ends with the first touchdown. I have a play it already. Travis Kelsey to record the first reception by a Kansas City Chief like at that. plus 175. I had the same bet for Christian McCaffrey. First 49er to record a reception, Christian McCaffrey, at plus 275. But as far as George Kittle is concerned, now listen, I don't have any data to back this up. This is just my gut feel. My gut feel tells me Kansas City score first mm. with a field goal, and then George Kittle scores the first touchdown of the game. And I also love the prop. Will the team that scores first win the game? No. All right? You know, five of the last seven Super Bowls, 
the team that scored first lost the Super Bowl, including the Philadelphia Eagles last year. They did. I'm curious what that's at because if you think the Chiefs score first, maybe you just wait to bet the Niners. Well, five. that's another thing that I, you know, we're obviously going to, in the modern era, Jack, of yeah. in-game betting. Yeah. Dude, I don't have a problem with waiting until somebody scores the first touchdown and taking the other team, no matter who it is, yeah. if you're getting seven and a half points or something. 100%. On the theme of long shots, I saw one that I like, which will sound weird coming from my Brock Purdy love. Brock Purdy's first pass of the game interception. I could <laughs> oh, see no. something wacky. No. And, and we're telling the, people we like San Francisco. Now you're telling us you're going to throw a damn pick hey, on his And then they kick a field goal, and then they rebound and go okay, down. the, the defense field. steps up after. I will say, as much as the script idea at the NFL, I don't buy into it. I do buy into narrative. And the Taylor Swift narrative, and also the Brock Purdy narrative. And the narrative being... Like, what if Brock Purdy goes into flux? What if he starts slow with an interception on his first pass? Could Sam Darnold come in the game? Could all the people who bet Sam Darnold to win Super Bowl MVP have a chance? So I, sometimes I don't mind taking the narrative shots there. So Brock at 41, first pass over the middle, gets tipped, ends up in the Chiefs' hands. I honestly don't hate it because I, it's a long game. i got to tell you what, I haven't really had a problem with any of the Taylor Swift stuff. I'm not bothered by it whatever you know mean but one thing it's gone too far the fact that now I know her favorite number <laughs> like the fact that I know that Taylor Swift's favorite number is 13 which is pretty twisted will it still be your favorite number everything goes so well for that girl probably it'll be worse for Brock Purdy <laughs> like the number 13 uh, somehow but Follow Jack online. He's going to be all over the strip all week uh, long. Great stuff. Great to see you, Jack. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sheena Bathory joins us next. Thirty-eight, forty-one, thirty, thirty. Nine assists, eight assists, seven assists, eight assists. If Jalen Brunson can continue to do this and the Knicks continue to overachieve and play themselves into a top. Five seed in the East, Jalen Brunson to get better consideration for the MVP. It is deserved. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kevin. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Favorite. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Chargers have the fifth pick in the National Football League draft. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different like roads that they could take uh, with this pick. And for the record as well, there's a few sports books out there already that already have next year's Super Bowl numbers up. The Chargers are like 30 to one. So there's a lot of work to do. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. He feels like he's got unfinished business, right? He won the national championship, did what he said he wanted to do, going back to Ann Arbor. And, you know, he coached, I think, with the Raiders as an assistant and then got the job with the Niners and then uh, went to title games, went to Super Bowls, uh, lost to his brother. And I think you're right, unfinished business. Go back, try to win a Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place 
I promise you, than game time decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern. On Kicking it live on Media Row in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the anticipation continues to build. Countdown to kickoff is on, but the Super Bowl is not the only big event in town uh, this week. We've got boxing matches, we've got football games, and we've got the first ever live power slap in which fans were able to buy tickets. It was invite only before. It's Power Slap 6, Friday night, for February the 9th, at the beautiful newly opened Durango. And I tell you what, we have a viral sensation. Forget about Taylor Swift, all right? Because uh, we've got Sheena Bathory, which I think is just the coolest, baddest-ass name ever I've ever heard. It's great to Thank meet you. you in person. And we have Frank Lamasella, the president of Power Slap. Good How to see you, you Frank. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining us. us. Appreciate it. Hey, listen, we're, ex- we're extremely fired up. I'm excited to, uh, to meet both of you. So let's start off uh, with you, uh, Sheena. What do you think of the Super Bowl experience, Las Vegas? It's quite the uh, quite the circus, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's definitely hyping up for our event too. The 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 vibe. I'm I'm arrived here, so it's it's fantastic. Yeah. Now you are you are taking on uh, Jackie Cataline uh, on um, on Friday night. We're just a couple of days away now. At what point do you lock it in and not want to be sitting around and doing things like this and just focus in on the fight? Absolutely. The the last week is just about the focus. I try to escalate myself from people. You know, and just keeping my, my po- positive myself and just manifesting for my next victory and my next knockout. And uh, Frank, Dana's talked about how viral yep. this sport has gone. We know in Eastern Europe and in Europe it's sort of been accepted. I, you know, when I look at your role, how much can you lean on Dana? Because it seems like he went through a lot of the same conversations that you've had with a lot of media types yeah. about this is a savage sport. What about concussions? What about TCT? And I can't help but think about the ironies. We sit here at the Super Bowl right. with a sport that kind of like you get concussions in, right? Yeah. How much has Dana sort of guided you and helped you say, uh, you know what, they're going to come at you in a lot of these interviews? He, he, he's been incredible. I mean, from the first moment that they asked me to do this, listen, if Dana asks you to do something in combat sports, yeah, the answer is yes, and we'll figure it all out later. Uh, so is that how you became the, yeah. the president? He because you were corporate, I, you're I, an attorney, I was and you merged, right? Years. Yep. So how did you end up sort of the face of this sport, so to speak, the representative of it? You know, I I give a lot of credit to Dana. I also give a lot of credit to Hunter Campbell, our chief business officer. He was the guy who brought us brought me over here five years ago, and this idea was starting. We knew it would be big. We they knew we needed somebody to focus on it full time, and you know, it was sort of next man up, batter up. Was the initial reaction more negative than you thought, the same as you thought? I you guys do focus groups, I'm assuming, no, and no. sort of, what, what, what did you think? No focus groups. No? The reality is our Dana and Lorenzo, you know, Lorenzo Fertitta is a part owner of this. He's yeah. also an owner of UFC. Um, they went through this exact story yeah. 20 years ago. You know, now UFC is this global property, 50, 50 events per year, but it was never always that way. It was no one would take an event. No one would allow it to happen. The Senate's writing like, all this stuff, and now you look at it today, and it's, it is what John it's John McCain right. called it human cockfighting. Right. So we, we, it's the same. This literally the same exact thing is happening with Power Slap, except we're light years ahead than when the UFC started because of all the experience we have. And I'm glad that you brought up uh, the Fertitas because I almost get a kick out of thinking about they must get a rush out of this, almost doing it over again. Well, it's fun. Right? They're like, hey, we're, the we've been through this, right? I would say, I would say. 100%. Dana loves having the group back together to basically build another sport from scratch. Um, and it's, it's exciting to now have the first live event outside of Apex at Durango. It all makes sense. So, Sheena, what do you say to people when they say, oh, that's a crazy sport, you wouldn't do it? Um, what, what do you say to people about this? Because you've competed in judo. Yes. You know, you've competed in, uh, in bodybuilding and fitness competitions. Yes. What is it about power slap? You said, you know what, because you seem to embrace it, and you're becoming the face of this. Yes. What is it about this sport that you love so much? Because you feel a I connection th- with the fans as well, don't you? I, I think uh, in eSport, I try to reach the highlights of my ability. 
and then I moved on. I can easily get bored, you know, once I, I discover the, the sport and I still love it. I still have my heart for this. But Power Slap was something new, something unique. It, 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 it needs so much courage, you know, which not all the, the competitors have. And that's why not so many women doing it, you know, and definitely needs so much power. And you not only have to hit hard, you also have to take the slap. So I was like, I, I can see myself in this vi uh, division. And as you can see, I'm, I'm almost two years and it just it just keep growing and I'm getting even more more confident and more comfortable with this. Let me ask you, that might sound like a, a novice question, but, you know, fighters train, they're wearing headgear, etc. Yes. Everyone was asking me this. How do they train to eat these shots, right? Because you don't want to get slapped in the face every day, <laughs> right? So how do you how do you I train? I, okay. Okay, so is, it, is it sort of like boxing? Do, are you wearing headgears? Are you taking headshots? Like how do you how do you prepare for that? Um, I would say my past relationship prepared me for that, <laughs> <laughs> but currently, <Okay. laughs> currently I'm, I'm just taking slaps only on the competition. But I already know that I am able to take it. That's enough. On, you know? here, on another note, is that <laughs> is it is it hard? Because I can imagine men would be intimidated from you knowing just how tough you are. Yes, they are. Yeah, I don't huh? blame them for it. Yeah, you're gonna need a <laughs> tough ass dude. <laughs> you know, you see our KOs? Oh God. Yeah. yeah. So what what do, what do you like better? What was more? Did you like blowing the kiss back after eating the shot, or do you like knocking okay, someone out? I like to eat the shot because. I can show for people also a different level of the power, of the strength, of the courage. But also when I'm going to give a shot, then I'm just going to show my power, you know. So in both cases, I think I can actually uh, show a lot about me. Now, speaking of courage, I got to tell you, so Jackie Cataline is a longtime mixed martial artist, yep. amateur wrestler, tough as nails. I imagine, Frank, it's hard to find opponents that want to fight Sheena. And I just respect the hell out of Jackie for stepping up and doing this. Yeah, ja Jackie. Right? Uh, coming out of an octagon, coming out yeah. of a cage to do this. Yeah, Jackie, I think, spends the time doing the U.S. Olympic trials for wrestling. She's done professional MMA before, so uh, it's a great opponent for Sheena. Yes. It's going to be a fantastic match. It's our Agony. first ever women's co-main uh, here in Vegas Super Bowl week. I mean, you can't, you can't write the script better. Now, I think of Las Vegas and how far it's come hosting Super Bowls right now, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, yep. sort of known as the first pro team, but... I don't think it would be unfair to say the UFC was kind of the first pro sports team yeah. here, wasn't it? it like it happened so before fast. the Vegas go like <sighs> when T-Mobile opened, I almost thought it was like it's like it was almost like the UFC arena uh, as well as the Golden 100%. Knights. 100. I moved out here like five six years ago. Maybe the Golden Knights were just starting about then five six years, right? Um, it really felt like UFC was the only thing in town. You fast forward, it's almost weird that it took so long for all this to happen because Vegas is such an awesome city, but now we have. Super Bowl, F1, the Spear, all these events, new cas new properties going up left and right. Well, we get the A's coming, right? All these sports are going to be here. This, Vegas is going to be a, a leading American town. So you have this card at the Durango, and it should be noted the uh, the Fertitas open at Durango, beautiful beautiful establishment. Yep. I know it's been brought up, and you've been asked before, obviously with the uh, with the UFC connections about sort of crossovers. Like, uh, you know, are you going to build it sort of? You take it from a 750 venue, sort of like the old days was at the Palms, right? Yeah. So, like, yeah, is so there sort of a vision of a growth, all right? And then one day we're going to be at T-Mobile yeah, in a couple of years? Right Right now we really love the live event experience. The experience is very different than any live event you've been to. It's very fast-paced. It's kind of a free-for-all, but kind of controlled chaos. So we love that element to it. And there's something really cool about being close. Everyone in the arena has an amazing seat right now. So... We're looking at like four or five thousand uh, seat venues that are like opera style tight, <laughs> yeah, almost yeah. like wrestling used to do this in the old days at the, like the Hammerstein Ballroom, right? They would have the ring in the yeah, middle. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, cool. yeah, 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 yeah. Like so, we're looking at things like that. And then as far as whether it's standalone or we, you know, if the opportunity is right to travel to the same city that UFC has a big pay per view that weekend, we'll do it. If not, it'll be a you know we'll find a standalone uh, night to do it in a different city. So let me ask you, Sheena, about uh, Jackie Cataline, a, a former wrestler. I just stated, very strong, thick. When you look at her, what do you expect from her? And I know you respect all your opponents because they're, you know, they're stepping up to face you. Okay, so I shouldn't have really expectation. I shouldn't underestimate any of my opponent. So in my eyes, all of them, I try to put like 
they are they are a competition so that helps me to bring out the best from me you know actually i really appreciate her the the fans can't complain because she's a badass fighter actually yeah we have a very similar background because of the combat sport and that's why i think it's going to be a very very equal equal fight you know as we are standing out for i can't wait to see this now as far as uh, combat sports have you ever thought about mixed martial arts yourself yes i'm training now mma for a year and I'm just waiting the right time and still for my first opponent. <laughs> now, it seems it seems like whatever she does, like she's just a natural at. Like, to, to be honest, from, from just a super freak yeah. athlete, especially in this combat sports zone, yeah, like, how, are, how lucky are you guys to have her this early in your stage of the I'm company? I'm lucky, too. I'm lucky, no, too. No, 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 it's great. <laughs> I mean, when we first did this, uh, we did a closed-door exhibition about 18 months ago at this point, March 2022. Sheena was one of the first ones who showed up, and she had a crazy knockout then. Then it took a while to get her back. Uh, she was assistant coach on season one. And you guys TV brought show. her to coach the men, yeah, right? Yeah, we brought her in So what was that like? like oh, the they're still, they still writing me. Like, so were they like, yeah. man, was this girl coming <laughs> in? And like, or were they like, man? Like, so what was it like coaching the men at first in, in a new sport like this? Mm, honestly, they give a lot of credit for my words. You know, they handled me with full of respect. And um, I wouldn't say that... I, I would say that I more try to inspire them mentally because the journey I may, I went through of different sports, you know, I was able to really connect in them. I'm very, very spiritual too, you know, so I think I, I, could, I could really... <laughs> Power slap and spiritual. <laughs> That's what I love, the, the contrast. All, I think all fighters has to be really yeah. sure. spiritual, you know? P pound for pound, Sheena has got one of the strongest slaps in the, in the whole promotion. And she's one of the fastest hand speeds. So the combination. Was there's a reason she was coaching. And I'm learning more and more about the technique. And I've hosted an MMA show, as people know, our viewers know, and I've been around combat yeah. sports for a long time. <laughs> but I'm not going to lie. Like the first time I saw an event live, it was basically like in a dug-in pool. Yeah. And I got blood in my drink. Okay. Right? So when it was like literally, I was like, whoa, this, this yeah. is like sort of whoa. And then, you know, I sort of got more and more and more, and it sort of evolved into NCAA athletes right. participating. So, you know, the, 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 the potential is limitless for this, no, really, isn't for, it? For sure. It's going to evolve, especially when we start taking on the road, having these bigger... These Do you think American media will evolve with this? I don't know if we even really need you care? It. Yeah, I don't think we really care. I mean, look, it's the first sport that was built on social and digital media. That's our focus. Um, the people we invite to the event, it create, it, it's almost our own media. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, so... I love doing things like this, but we're also, we're good either way. Hey, so listen, it's awesome. we got about a minute left with you here. Tell people about the card. Yep. We have Sheena versus Jackie Catalyde. Who else is Sheena on, on the card? Sheena versus Jackie is the co-main event. The headlining fight is the grudge match between the yep. two coaches from season two. Chris Thomas, he's 5-0, five, oh, five knockouts. It's going to be awesome, yeah. Versus Manny Muniz. He's has six fights with us, never been knocked down. So you have a guy who's 5-0, five, oh, five KOs against a guy who's never been knocked down. Um, the, the card starts at 9 o'clock Eastern, the main card. Starts at 9 o'clock Eastern. It's live and free on Rumble. Uh, the early prelim starts at 7.30. And Roku as well, right? Just Rumble. Oh, uh, just wait, but you could download the Rumble app on your Roku device. Yes, exactly. Yeah, devices. Yeah. Any device that has an app you could download. You I could say download that because Rumble. we're on Roku as well. I love so. it. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. But it's hey. live and free. It's a great event. Uh, it's going to be – that house is going to be packed. It's going to be booming in there, and we're, we're excited for uh, – to bring the house down on Super Bowl weekend here in Vegas. Hey, listen, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank I look you. forward to doing this again. Sheena, it was a Thank pleasure you. meeting you. It was all best of luck on <laughs> Friday you. night against Jackie Cataline. Check it out on Rumble. It's going to be sick. And for the record, I'm betting on Sheena. Minus 275. <laughs> Lay it down and win, baby. Let's do this thing. We're kicking it live in Las Vegas. Countdown to kickoff continues. Let's roll. to get better consideration for the MVP. It is deserved. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. 
go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby, the money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Chargers have the fifth pick in the National Football League draft. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different like roads that they could take uh, with this pick. And for the record as well, there's a few sports books out there already that already have next year's Super Bowl numbers up. The Chargers are like 30 to 1. So there's a lot of work to do. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. He feels like he's got unfinished business, right? He won the national championship, did what he said he wanted to do, going back to Ann Arbor. And, you know, he coached. I think with the Raiders as an assistant and then got the job with the Niners and then uh, went to title games, went to Super Bowls, uh, lost to his brother. And I think you're right. Unfinished business. Go back. Try to win a Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast. Only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game starts so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh, tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Thanks to Sheena Bathory as well as Frank Lemicella for joining us uh, live from Media Row earlier in the day. They're going to be live. This is the Power Slaps' first ever live card. They've had live events, obviously, before, but this is a Power Slap 6. But it's the first time the public was able to buy tickets, although it was limited to begin with. So they only leaked a couple of tickets out there. It's in a venue that holds like 750 people plus, you know, extra guests, uh, etc., uh, but this stuff is going to be lit. There's a lot of excitement about it uh, this week, and we've got odds for it. And for those of you that just watched this interview, do you want to bet against this woman? Like, like seriously, like look, watch her fights, watch her, watch her dominate and just murder people. As I stated, I don't know how they find anybody that wants to to step out. You know, really, you want to get slapped in the slapped in the head uh, by this girl. All right, the the Hungarian, you know, she's like, she's a Hungarian hurricane. <laughs> That's what she is, literally and figuratively. She's minus 275. I got to tell you, I never thought I'd be giving you a power slap Super Bowl parlay, but why don't we, like, uh, we'll parlay Sheena Bathory. <laughs> but all kidding aside, I am going to bet on Sheena Bathory, minus 275. The event is Friday night. Bet MGM actually takes bets on power slap, and, and I'm glad I'm in Vegas, actually, uh, for this, because to be honest, pretty much everybody in Vegas is accepting action uh, on this sport. And it's only going to continue to grow, right? I know, like, there was a lot of negativity about it when it came out uh, last year. But there used to be a lot of negativity. Put it this way. I remember living in Toronto, and it wasn't allowed in Ontario. Fast forward to they sold 55,000 tickets at the Rogers Center once there. And didn't they just have a card there the other day? You know, John McCain called the UFC human cockfighting before in the past. Now, former presidents are sitting cage side at these events. 
So in other words, like if Power Slap was a stock, I wouldn't like fade it. I would invest in it because it's only going to get bigger. It's not going away. It's only going to get bigger because of people like Sheena Bathory. So let's pick some winners on the other side. One of the best in the business, Brady Cannon, steps up and in. Let's roll.